Hi, it's me. I'm Shar. A lot of people have been requesting if I could do a tutorial video on how I animate, which is great. I think it's really, really cool that a lot of my viewers get inspired to learn or improve in animation, and it makes me excited knowing there'll probably be more animators in the near future. Thinking about how to do it, though, has been a little hard. These past few weeks, I've spent a good chunk of time trying to figure out how I'd be able to teach what I do in the best way I can. So at first, I thought it would be a good idea to make separate videos for storyboarding, lining, coloring, etc. But I think there are a lot of videos out there that already do the same thing, so I wanted to try something different. I was thinking of making a series of videos where you can animate little scenes with me, or watch me animate them while I discuss my thought process behind it. You can even put me on as a little lullaby to sleep or something. <laughs> I promise no jump scares. Anyway, I realized that I learn and teach better through application, so I figured this would be a pretty concrete way to go about it. I need to stress again that I'm not a professional. I'm a hobbyist. I'm actually just a computer science graduate who ended up falling into the animation rabbit hole. But I figured it would be nice to share how I make things and have a little I don't know, sharing going on in the comments on other tips and tricks you do with your own art as well. Okay, so again, please feel free to follow along if you'd like, or if you just prefer watching me and learning about how I do it through my messy explanations, feel free to do that as well. I appreciate the company. In this video, we'll be making this, a little peace sign portrait animation. You don't necessarily have to follow the design I chose for this character. If you want, you can place your own original characters in there. Uh, just note that the more details your character might have, the longer it'll take to draw. I think that goes without saying. I have Genshin Impact Trauma. I'm going to be using Adobe Animate to animate this, which is what I use for all my 2D animations. You don't have to use Adobe Animate, you can opt to use any other software that supports animation. So as long as you have drawing tools, the concept of frames, and a way to play them all together, then you can use any platform you're comfortable with, like Clip Studio, Toon Boom, Open Tunes, Flip a Clip, etc. This is the part where I kind of just want to get the idea across. So the most important points for me to cover here are the three poses my character is doing. That's the initial pose, where she's just looking at the screen. The anticipation pose, where she braces herself and starts winding up her arms for the explosive peace signs. And the peace sign pose. During this stage of the animation, I try to get a feel of the timing, adding or removing frames that hold the pose to my liking. It's a good idea to use the onion skin setting. You can find it in most animation tools. This lets you peek at your other frames to make sure your sketches are consistent to your character in each frame. Sometimes I do a cleaner version of the sketches over the old ones in another layer. So for animated shorts, I usually draw these sketches as fast as possible because I don't want to lose my train of thought. Um, it makes them look unflattering. <laughs> So I end up doing a cleaner one for future me's sake and as practice in case I need to collaborate with people in the future. I don't think people would understand my hieroglyphs if I didn't clean up. In this cleanup phase, I also tend to add additional frames. Fast movements require very few frames, but slower movements like stopping at her peace pose do need extra frames for winding down. Things in real life don't normally stop to an immediate halt, just like when you bounce a ball or push open a door, there ends up a residual force from moving that object. Physics is terrifying. So let's move on. A quick reminder to the people who may be following along that if you'd like, you can pause the video here and start on this step of your animation. I've also placed a few of my favorite playlists I use when I'm animating in the description if you like having your brain tickled while drawing. Okay, back to animating. Now that we have our sketch ready, we're ready to do some line art. Know that this isn't really a requirement, especially if you like having your line art have that sketch-like quality to it. Uh, but doing this will also help make the animation look more consistent and make it easier to color in the long run. Consistency is really, really important. It would be a little weird if your character's head suddenly became tiny. I'm speaking from experience. In Adobe Animate, I use the brush tool for line art. It's a vector brush, it takes a while to get used to, and can be pretty inconsistent at times. 
Personally, I use it at a static line width of about size 3 or 4 and I have smoothing at 100% so there's no pressure sensitivity. I also have the brush tool zoom size with stage so it's consistent regardless of how much I zoom in or out. One thing that's been really important to me is the use of drawing objects. Having this setting on places each stroke into a little component of its own. So that way, if I need to edit, warp, or erase that stroke, it won't interfere with other strokes. If you noticed, I also color specific brush strokes differently, so it makes doing that a lot easier too. Other professional animation programs can work in both raster and vector, and can conveniently erase intersecting lines you want gone, which makes cleanup a breeze. I wish Adobe Animate had that, but I don't know. This is my Mr. Struggle moment. Going back to our little animation, once we have the keyframes done, we can start placing the in-betweens. So these are frames that help smooth out the animation. I placed a few in between. <laughs> Sorry. So I placed a few in between each pose. Timing is important. I usually place more pauses in between slower movements, especially since there's not much change between frames. And the opposite goes for the faster movements. Smaller pauses, bigger changes. Once we've finished drawing all the frames, we can start removing the intersecting lines that make the animation look a bit messy. I like drawing my line art as clean as possible so that I don't have to spend too much time cleaning it, but some overlaps can't really be helped. I set my erase tool to the erase selection setting here so that I only erase the lines that I have selected. It makes cleaning a lot easier, it's a lot more convenient. Now that we've set up those frames, we can have a quick look over to see our progress and go to the next step of our little project. Stop! I'd like to interrupt you for a quick ad break. This video is sponsored by XPPen. I've been using their line of tablets since I switched to screen tablets a couple of years ago, so I'm super happy to be able to work with a company whose products I do love using. Last month, they sent over their new Artist Pro 16 Gen 2 tablet for me to try out. Its main features include their new X3 Pro Smart Chip that improves pressure sensitivity, accuracy, and response time, a 2650 by 1600 high resolution screen, low blue light eye protection, paper like surface, a wireless shortcut remote, and an ergonomic design that makes sure your wrists won't strain when you draw. It also has these cute fold out legs that you can easily open and close. Ooh. <laughs> It's light, portable, and also allows for USB-C connection. And you can actually connect this device to a phone or a tablet as long as it supports USB 3.1. I was able to connect it to my tablet and draw from there. It's a good bonus to anyone who has mobile art software. My PC doesn't come with a USB-C port, so I used the USB-A and HDMI cables that came with them. All I had to do was connect those and the power cord, but I think the video explains why I almost failed my hardware classes back in college. Oh. What are you doing? I'm struggling. Okay. Oh, thank God. I just put it in the wrong hole. You can set the wireless shortcut remote to work at any orientation. So like the normal person I am, I use it upside down. Each button in the dial can be set up in the driver, and you can have up to four key groups to fit all your shortcut needs. It also comes with a satisfyingly clicky pen case a drawing glove, and a wiping cloth. Same as all the other tablets I've tried from XP Pen, the driver, which I think is the most important part of any tablet, is great. It's fully customizable and runs smoothly. If you don't want a screen tablet, you can set it to be a regular screenless one too. You switch modes just by holding down the power button. Overall, it's a really versatile and compact tablet you can use whether you're just at home or on the go. I've been using it for around a month now for drawing and animating, and it works really well. If you're interested in getting one, feel free to use my affiliate links in the description below. You can also use my discount code SHAR5 to get 5% off your orders in the official XP Pen store. Oh, okay, that was a pretty long ad. <laughs> Back to drawing. This part is something I'd consider optional if you're not planning on doing any sort of shading. Here, we set up where the shadows and highlights are and which parts have colors we want separated. For Adobe Animate users, this is important, I use the pencil tool for this step. I use blue for shadows and red for highlights or for signifying a color change. I usually color blushes in as a radial gradient, so I have these huge circles for those. 
The fill tool by default only colors in drawings that have no gaps, so I make sure to cover any holes or gaps in the shapes I've made so far. In other animation programs, there's an option to color over these lines automatically when you do get to coloring. It's not available here on Adobe Animate, so I make do with this kind of process instead. I feel like making this video is a sign I need to try other software. <laughs> Now that we've set up all of our lines, it's time to get coloring. Personal preference, I color all my quote-unquote inside lines with the brush tool's paint selection option. This takes quite a long time and can be very frustrating when you miss something in a random frame, so don't feel obliged, you can skip this part if you like. This is also where having the brush strokes be drawing objects makes things easier. I can just select over the brush strokes I want to color and paint over them without messing with the other lines. Additionally, very rare Adobe Animate Tub, but you can use JavaScript to make custom commands. I hate having to change tools or swatches to color in what I've just selected, so I ended up making a script that just automatically applies the current color to whatever I'm currently selecting. It's a really useful command for me, so I want to share it with you guys. I'm placing a download link to the script I made in the description below, and I've added a few other scripts I use there as well plus a little guide on, you know, how to get them working. Okay, now for the actual coloring. Since I can't color inside drawing objects, I'll have to break them down. Uh, I can do that by going to each frame and breaking down all the objects so that they're all flat. Alternatively, I can use the Edit Multiple Frames tool and just select everything and break everything down from there. Now I just need to color with the Paint Bucket or Fill tool. I find it really useful to have a reference somewhere in another layer that you can easily copy colors off of. Luckily, I already have one prepared for this character. A useful coloring tip for Adobe Animate users, if you just hold click with the fill tool, it'll automatically fill in whatever closed space is empty if you hover over it. Clicking on a specific color will also only change that color and empty spaces in particular when you hover over them. That was, that was confusing. I'm just gonna show it on screen. I probably showed it on screen. <laughs> After coloring everything, we can switch our eraser and set it to erase only pencil lines. And then we make it huge and erase and... Ta-da! The animation is complete! We can now export this as an animated GIF, GIF, I don't know, or video and share it with the world. This is also usually the part where I draw the background, but I think I'm just gonna use a solid color for this one. It's definitely not because I'm lazy. So there it is. <laughs> Congratulations on finishing the video, whether or not you decided to animate. Again, I appreciate that you watched and I appreciate your company. In the rare chance you did end up animating, oh, you're crazy. <laughs> In the rare chance you did end up animating and you plan on posting it, please tag me on social media because I would really, really love to see it. Before you go, I'd just like to let you know that XP Pen allowed me to host a little giveaway. It's a simple giveaway I'll be hosting on Twitter, or uh, X, <laughs> I don't know if people call it that now. But all you'll have to do is follow me, follow XP Pen CA, and retweet the giveaway tweet to get a chance to win a Deco Pro MW Gen 2. I'll be drawing the winner in a week after this video goes live, so if you're watching this before then, try it out! Again, thank you for watching this uh, experimental video of mine. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it or if you want a different kind of talking <laughs> type of video. I do my best to read the comments even though I don't reply very often. Thank you as well to my coffee and YouTube members who help support me and my work monthly. I really, really appreciate the support. If you'd like to support monetarily as well, which by all means you don't have to, it's already more than enough that you're watching this, um, feel free to visit my coffee page or hit the join button below. I'm still navigating this whole social media content thing, but do know that it helps both me and the people I love a lot, and I'm very grateful. This was a long video, I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go play Baldur's Gate. Have a great rest of your day and take care. Bye!